Welcome back home, COP family. To prioritize your safety, please listen closely as we remind you of these health and safety protocols required by the Department of Health and the IATF. All COP campuses will be thoroughly disinfected before members are allowed to come in. Before entering the COP premises, always wear a face mask and a face shield. Please undergo temperature scanning. Use the disinfecting mats. While inside COP, use the sanitizing stations every 20 minutes. Take note of our social distancing markers around the campus. Always follow the signs and maintain the flow. Use the foot markers when queuing. Use the assigned stairs when going up or down. When finding your assigned seat or exiting the auditorium, please approach our friendly ushers and they will gladly assist you. Please remember that you can only sit on chairs with a red marker. A safety officer will always be present to assist you for any concerns regarding the mentioned protocols. We're doing our best to help keep you safe. So all you need to do is seek God and focus on His Word. Welcome back home, COP family. Wow, that feels good to say. We are back in live worship services and it's wonderful to be able to say, see you face to face. We have five weekend schedules. Saturday at 6 p.m., Sunday at 7.30 a.m., 10 a.m., 12.30 p.m., and 3 p.m. We'll finally get to worship, pray, and learn the Word all together again in God's house. But how about the kids and seniors who can't attend services yet? Don't worry, lots of options are available. Everyday Jesus and Senior Moments to Remember are still available online. And our South Saturday drive-in service at 7.30 a.m. is a lot of fun and still available. And our services will still be on Facebook and YouTube. For more information and latest updates, keep checking our social media pages. COP family, let's go to the house of the Lord. Let's go to the house of the Lord.
Welcome back home, COP family. To prioritize your safety, please listen closely as we remind you of these health and safety protocols required by the Department of Health and the IATF. All COP campuses will be thoroughly disinfected before members are allowed to come in. Before entering the COP premises, always wear a face mask and a face shield. Please undergo temperature scanning. Use the disinfecting mats. While inside COP, use the sanitizing stations every 20 minutes. Take note of our social distancing markers around the campus. Always follow the signs and maintain the flow. Use the foot markers when queuing. Use the assigned stairs when going up or down. When finding your assigned seat or exiting the auditorium, please approach our friendly ushers and they will gladly assist you. Please remember that you can only sit on chairs with a red marker. A safety officer will always be present to assist you for any concerns regarding the mentioned protocols. We're doing our best to help keep you safe. So all you need to do is seek God and focus on His Word. Welcome back home, COP family. Wow, that feels good to say. We are back in live worship services and it's wonderful to be able to say, see you face to face. We have five weekend schedules. Saturday at 6 p.m., Sunday at 7.30 a.m., 10 a.m., 12.30 p.m., and 3 p.m. We'll finally get to worship, pray, and learn the Word all together again in God's house. But how about the kids and seniors who can't attend services yet? Don't worry, lots of options are available. Everyday Jesus and Senior Moments to Remember are still available online. And our South Saturday drive-in service at 7.30 a.m. is a lot of fun and still available. And our services will still be on Facebook and YouTube. For more information and latest updates, keep checking our social media pages. COP family, let's go to the house of the Lord. Let's go to the house of the Lord.
everyone, and welcome to our Saturday 6 p.m. service here in Cathedral of Praise. We welcome every branches and campuses and even everyone watching us through online. So now let's all stand up. We welcome everyone here in the auditorium, in the courts of the Lord, and everyone in our baby care room. So now we will be praying for protection and covering, knowing that God is our fortress. Amen? Amen. So how do we pray, COP? Let us all lift our hearts to the Lord and let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you so much for we are here in your house. We worship you, O oh God, and we praise your name. We enter your courts, O oh God, with a thankful heart. And God, we are here for one purpose, Lord, and that is to lift your name up, O oh Lord. God, we thank you so much because we are here, Lord God, with an open heart telling you, Lord, that we are so, so much thankful for you are our shield, O oh God. Lord, keeping us protected, Lord, from any harm or danger, Lord. You're our front guard, our rear guard, Lord. Your faithfulness is our shield. You surround us, O oh God, wherever we are. And we know, Lord, that you will always be there for us. Lord, we find security, Lord, under your wings, O oh Lord. You, you hide us, O oh God, under your wings. And we know, O oh Lord, that you will be confident, O oh God, every time because you are the one shielding us, covering us, protecting us, O oh Lord. And God, we thank you, O oh Lord, because you are our shepherd, Lord. We thank you because you are the one who takes care of us, Lord. You lead us, Lord, in quiet waters, Lord. You lead us, O oh God, in safety. Lord, your rod and your staff, Lord, comforts us, O oh Lord. And God, whenever we are afraid, Lord, we can come to you, Lord, as our shepherd, and we know that we are safe, Lord God. We are safe, Lord God, in your mighty strong hands, O Lord. We are safe, Lord God, in your caring arms, O God. And Lord, we thank you because we know that whatever circumstances it is, Lord, we know that we will be protected and safe. God, we also thank you because you are the miraculous God, that you will miraculously protect us, Lord, from this pandemic, O God. We know, Lord, that our assets will be protected. Lord, our physical bodies will be protected, Lord, from this plague that sticks. And even our soul, Lord God, will be protected from having cynicisms or depressions, Lord. And you will always give us the joy of the Lord. It will always be our strength. And God, we know that as Jesus, Lord, will charge angels, Lord, to minister, Lord God, to his people, keeping us safe, Lord, Lord guarding us, Lord God, wherever we are. And Father, we pray and thank you because as believers, Lord, you have called us to walk in faith, O God, not in fear, Lord, to walk in prudent faith, O Lord, because we know, God, that that faith, Lord, will always be there for us, O Lord, that whenever we are faithless, Lord God, you remain faithful. And Father, we know, O Lord, that in the season of pandemic, O God, we will experience your reality, O Lord, we will experience, O oh God, your protection. We will experience, O oh God, your covering upon us, Lord. And you will never live in fear, Lord. But you will be strong and courageous, O oh Lord God. We will live in faith, O oh God, declaring that you are our Lord. You are our God. You are the God that will always be there for us. The faithful God that will never leave us nor forsake us. And even, Lord, the frontliners, Lord, who are sacrificing and serving, Lord, they will be supernaturally covered by the shield of God. They will be covered by His faithfulness, O Lord. We pray, Lord God, for every doctors and nurses, Lord God, for every medical people, Lord, who are working hard, Lord God, even 24-7. I pray, Lord, that you will give them safety. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus is the light of this world, and the unfolding of his word gives light. Jesus is the Christ. Not a way, a truth, and one way of life. At COP, we know that like the apostles, we are to preach the gospel publicly and from house to house. It is a privilege to be in your homes sharing the gospel. 
At COP, we know a pastor is to teach the Word of God, enabling us to live lives that please the Lord. At COP, we know we are to preach the gospel to the poor, bringing them to what Jesus called life and life more abundantly. At COP, we heal the sick in Jesus' name, and our God is with us even to the end of the age. At COP, we know that the message is the gospel. We love it, we live it, and we preach it. It is the good news, and it is the power of God unto salvation for those who believe. At COP, our eyes are on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We don't worship worship, we don't worship fellowship, we worship Jesus. At COP, we know that we have been called by God to be priests. We are to serve Him. We don't live in our own little world. We serve Him fervently until every lost person is found. We will build 200 churches across our land and across the world in the next 20 years. At COP, we know every member has been given the Great Commission, so we joyfully work while it is yet day, seeing people born again, baptized in water, baptized in the Holy Spirit, and learning to live for God. At COP, we know that we are to bear fruit and not to gather fruit. There is no shortage of people that need to hear the gospel. Our joy is to go to the harvest field and then bring the harvest field to the Lord. At COP, we know we are to fill His house with His praise. We praise the Lord. We praise Him for who He is and what He does. If it's not about Him, it's not praise. At COP, we know that the tithe is not about obedience to the law. It is before the law, during the law, and even Jesus taught tithing. It is our joy to bring the whole tithe into the storehouse to the Lord. At COP, we know prosperity is about trusting our Heavenly Father for everything we need. No fear of debt, no fear of poverty, no fear of people. Our Father is our provider. At COP, we know that Jesus taught us to pray, Our Father. That means that we are part of a great family of God across this world. When one part of that family needs help, it is our role freely give as we have freely received. At COP, we know God's grace abounds to us, teaching us to say no to sin and to work hard for Him.
glad that we are here back in the house of the Lord. Welcome to our Saturday evening worship service. We welcome all of our wonderful campuses, our fruitful benches, and also those joining us online in the parking lots, the courtyards, and also outside in our alfresco services. Thank you so much for your faithfulness coming here in God's house today. Now, as we continue our services, we just want to request everyone that we will be wearing our face mask and our face shield all throughout the service. We will be maintaining, observing our social distancing. And also, please help us out by completing the contact tracing form as we follow government guidelines and so that our hearts will be focused on seeking our God tonight. Now, are you ready to worship the Lord, COP? Yeah. Let's give all the praise to our wonderful God.
God is good. For our fervent prayer tonight, we will be praying for all our loved ones, our relatives, our friends, our neighbors, everyone who have been stricken by sickness and disease. And we believe that Jesus is our healer. Amen? Amen. So now let's lift our hearts to the Lord and let's call them by name, believing that by His wounds, we are already healed. So let's pray fervently and with joy. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much because we know, O oh God, that Jesus is our healer, that there's healing, O oh God, in your wings, that by your wounds, Jesus, O oh God, we have been healed. We thank you, Lord, because you are not bound by space, O oh God. Lord, you can heal, O oh God, people as we pray to you, Lord. In their hospital rooms, O oh God, you will touch them and you will visit them, O oh Lord. In their sickbed, Lord God, you will heal them and restore them. They will not die but live and declare your glory. We know, O oh God, that you are our Jehovah Rapha, the God who heal and the God who restore. We know, O oh God, that no sickness and no disease, Lord God, shall conquer this body. But we know, O oh Lord, that you already redeem us, O oh God, from the power of sickness. We do believe, Lord God, that this sickness has no hold upon us. For we know, God, that by your grace and by your mercy and by your compassionate heart, O Lord, you are willing and you are able, Lord, to heal those who are sick in their bodies, O Lord. We believe, Lord God, that they will be restored. We believe, Lord God, that they will receive healing. And God, we put our faith in you, Lord, for you are our healer. You are our Jesus, our healer. God, we lift up to you all our loved ones, our relatives, our friends and our neighbors who are sick right now. Let them receive healing in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's give God a big clap offering. And you may all be seated. Let's focus our attention to the screens and let's have a wonderful testimony. <laughs> This week at COP, let's start with great news from our mighty men in uniform. This week, our MMU saw 163 military souls saved through various outreaches. This week at COP, our Bulacan campus outreach saw 11 people saved. This week at COP, District 20 has the angels rejoicing over 24 souls won to the Lord. This week at COP, Go 200, we praise God for 13 friends and relatives saved as brother and sister Noel and Ophel Fadri reached out in New Jersey, USA. Also, a new Go group was birthed. The gospel is truly good news. This week at COP, a long a pole. 16 were saved in an online outreach and some are already also attending Go groups. This week at COP, we thank God for the harvests our brothers and sisters have received from the Lord. Grace Sison dedicated her food stall business. From our Go Group in Winnipeg, Canada, a double blessing for Ramiel Kyle Velikaria. He received his promotion less than six months after starting with the company, and he dedicated his Honda Civic 2022 to the Lord. From COP Davao, Lyra Munkal dedicated her new car. Also from Davao, Raymart and Karil Bello testify to God's goodness as they dedicated both a house and a car. Likewise from Davao, Coco Mozar praises God for her newly dedicated condo unit. From COP Naik, Ernie and Weng Mohika dedicated their new car to the Lord. From Maine campus, Daniel David dedicated their Toyota Innova upon bringing his family to Fortress 91 for the first time. From South, the Balza family dedicated their Mitsubishi Expander, while from East, Jomar and Charmaine dedicated their new motorcycle. Finally, coming up at COP Israel Night 2021 is next Sunday, October 3 at 6.30 p.m. This will be via Zoom and Facebook closed group, so be sure Israel to her family to get the link and join us for an evening of fun, prizes, songs, and encouragement. Thanks to all of you who have been joining the online photo games. As we say, take me back to Israel. We know the Lord will do that for us soon. 
It has been another great week at COP. Well, for those of you in our Calvary Baby Branch Church, we want to give you a shout out tonight. And everybody shouted. They got to meet for one week and then got shut down again. COVID-19 is fascinating, but God will cause this to end well in Jesus' name. So thank you for being here in the middle of lockdown, and thank you for being here on a stormy night. Would you look around at everybody and shout, thank you? All right. We're doing the service a little differently tonight, and that's my fault because I knew how much you have been working to get here and wanting in the services. And... I had a little surgery on my jaw this week, an old infection came up underneath an old root canal, and so I have a mouthful of stitches. And so I'm told the congregation this morning at drive-in, I'm not going to preach, but I'm just going to talk to you tonight. Everybody said, just talking. Because I think I already tore a stitch loose this morning, and I don't want to tear any more stitches loose tonight. And everybody said? Now those of you that have had that kind of stuff, you know what I'm talking about. It feels fascinating. I'm going to combine the offering thought and the sermon tonight because I want to finish all of this hand of God at one time. Everybody say, all the study on the hand of God. First Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, and his, mother's name, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bore him in pain. Jabez called upon the God of Israel, saying, oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my border, and that your hand might be with me, and that you would keep me from harm so that it might not bring me pain, and God granted his request. Now, add one more verse to that. Psalms 139, Psalms 139, verses 1 to 6. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up, you discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O oh Lord, you know it altogether. You hem me in, behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain it. Now let me read you that passage from Psalms 139, New Living Translation. O Lord, you have examined my heart and know everything about me. You know when I sit down or when I stand up. You know my thoughts even when I'm far away. You see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything I do. You know what I'm going to say even before I say it. Lord, you go before me and follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. Oh, I like that. Everybody say, you place, Ulitanatan, you place your hand of blessing on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. I want to teach you tonight from the prayer of Jabez, maybe one of the greatest secrets I can teach you about how to have solid achievement in the middle of hard times as a Christian. How to have solid accomplishment in a troubled world as a Christian. Now if you were to walk up and ask the average person today how they have achieved what they have achieved in the middle of COVID-19, how they have accomplished what they have accomplished in the middle of COVID-19, uh, they would answer you in a variety of ways, and they have answered me in this way. Some would say, I'm lucky. I have good feng shui. That's just nothing but chop suey to me. Others would say, I had good timing. Others would say, I've really worked my connections. I've maintained my connections. Since I went to LaSalle as a young person, I've maintained my connections and my connections and my, my contacts have really helped me in this time. Other people would say, it's all about me, my ability. I'm smarter than everybody else. Others would say, it's because of my hard work and discipline. But Jabez understood something. 
that even many Christians today have never gotten a hold of. Jabez understood. He needed God's hand upon his life. Everybody say, God's hand upon my life. And one of the reasons I wanted to preach this all as one long unit is because last week I taught you that the presence of God is what makes a difference in our life. That learning to recognize that we are a people of the presence. And the presence of God is not just some fairy tale thing within our lives. That the presence of God makes a difference in our lives. Everybody say, makes things different. Take that up a step even higher and recognize the hand of God's blessing upon your life. Again, Psalms 139, verse 5 and 6, New Living Translation. You go before me and follow me. There's a person of the presence. There's a person who understood and lived the presence of God. You place your hand of blessing upon my head. That's the presence on steroids. That's the presence increased infinitely. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. Now, now listen to the psalmist. He said, God, the fact that you would place your hand of blessing on my head is something that's too wonderful for me. How do I begin to understand the goodness and the graciousness of God that would put his hand of blessing upon my head in the middle of everything going on in the world around me, God's blessings, God's hand of blessing would rest upon my head. Now, beloved, we'll close out with this in communion today also. But I want you just to understand, Jewish people have no, no problem with the concept of the goodness of God. Jewish people understand they have been raised since they were children that God gets involved in the affairs of life and that God wants to bless his people with a good life. And everybody said? But Gentile Christians, we have this, this thing going with us. Coming out of the old ancient world of, of, of the philosophers, the cynicism, we've got, we've got this thing that, that, that God wants to, to save us and God wants to forgive our sins, but God does not want to be involved in our everyday lives. But Jesus said, I came to give you life and life more abundantly. We need to come back to an understanding that we have a wonderful heavenly Father that knows our needs before we ask them, and he is the provider and sustainer of our lives. And that even in the hard times, you place your hand of blessing upon my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It's too much for me to understand, the psalmist said. Now, when you begin to talk about the hand of God upon us, I want you to understand that the hand of God upon our life is for good. Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 18. I told them of the hand of my God that had been upon me for good. For what? Ezra chapter 8 verse 22. The hand of our God is for good on all who seek him. For what? For what? Ezra chapter 7 verses 9 and 10. For on the first day of the month he began to go up from Babylonia, and on the first day of the fifth month he came to Jerusalem, for the good hand of his God was upon him. Now in each of these three verses, when it talks about the hand of God, it is for good. It is for what? It is for what? Some translations say, call it the gracious hand of God. Either way, the Hebrew word is tob, T-O-B. And it means for your benefit. Everybody say beneficial. The hand of God comes upon your life. Not to destroy you. The hand of God comes upon your life for your benefit. Everybody say, for my good. Now I want to look at three thoughts with you today, very quickly. Number one, I want to talk about the hand of God in our personal life. Then I want to talk about the hand of God upon our Christian service and our, our work for God. And then I want to talk about how do we see the hand of God begin to come upon our lives? Not just the presence in our lives, but God's hand of blessing 
upon our lives. Now let's start with our personal life. Everybody say, my life. When God's hand comes upon you, it, it makes you unique. People, people begin to recognize there's something different about you. Luke chapter 1, beginning with verse 66, referring to John the Baptist. And all who heard them laid them up in their hearts, saying, What then will this child be? For the hand of the Lord was with him. The thing that made John the Baptist unique, and remember, the hand of God came upon John the Baptist in hard years. These were years full of the corruption in the temple. These were years, the, the, these were at the peak of the Roman years of occupation. And you have to understand, almost every one of these passages I'm going to talk to you about, the hand of God came upon people in the hard times. In the what times? So in these difficult times, the hand of God came upon a child to be the forerunner of the Messiah. And people looked around and said, well, what will this child be? People began to recognize, the other people around them began to recognize the hand of God was upon this child. There was something unique about them. Now, beloved, when people begin to see this uniqueness about your life, never, never, dispa never disparage God. Ne never make people think small of God. Don't begin to talk about your charisma. Don't begin to talk about it's the it factor. It's not the it factor. It's the God factor. Don't begin to talk about your charisma. It's about much more than charisma. It's about the charismata. It's about the Holy Ghost upon your life. The hand of God comes upon you. And all of a sudden, even when you make mistakes, things go well. I didn't hear you. I didn't say when you get involved in sin. I said when you make mistakes. It's like God has put his hand upon your life, and some people say, oh, they're golden. Everything that does always works. That, that's not golden. That's the hand of God upon a person's life. Everybody say God's hand. So it makes this a little unique, and people begin to see that this person is going to be successful. This person makes things happen when nobody else can get anything to happen. It's the hand of God upon their life. The hand of God sustains us in the hard times. Psalms chapter 18, verse 35, in David's very difficult years. David said, and <laughs> these were his difficult years. He's, he's quoting out of Chronicles. You have given me the shield of salvation, and your right hand supported me, and your gentleness made, you, made me great. Psalm 63, verse 8, my soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. You, you wonder what will keep business people, what will keep your business afloat in the hard times? The hand of God. You wonder what will keep your career on track and, and not just afloat, but on track and moving forward. The hand of God upon your life. You wonder what will cause your, your family to be blessed and taken care of and, and there's always a way and things always just seem to work. The hand of God upon your family. You have to understand the sustain, what sustains us in the hard times is the hand of God upon our life. Everybody say God's hand on my life. I could preach about that for six years, but moving quickly. The hand of God upon our life gives us courage to do great things, to attempt things that others are afraid of. Now think with me to Ezra here for a minute. In Ezra chapter 7, verse 28. And who extended to me his steadfast love before the king, King Artaxerxes. God extended his steadfast love to Ezra before the king and his counselors and before all the king's mighty officers. I took courage for the hand of the Lord my God was upon me and I gathered leading men from Israel to go with me. Now, when you back up a little bit to verse 25, you begin to see what King Artaxerxes asked Ezra to do. He said, and you, Ezra, according to the wisdom of your God that is in your hand, appoint magistrates and judges who may judge all the people in the province beyond the river, all such as know the laws of your God, and those who do not know them, you shall teach them. Now look to verse 27. Blessed be the Lord, the God of our fathers, who put such a thing in the heart of the king to beautify the house of the Lord that is in Jerusalem. Now just condensing the book of Ezra down very quickly. In the book of Ezra, we find the attempt to rebuild the temple of God in Jerusalem. We, we find 
the provinces from beyond the river, the governors from beyond the river, stopping it for a generation. For a what? And then new permission is now given, and they're able to build it. And now the new king, Artaxerxes, says, Ezra, I want you to go to that very troubled area where everybody hates the Jews, and you're a Jew. And I want you to go to that area and all those provinces beyond the river that have fought your people. I want you to go there and I want you to rule them and I want you to put leaders and magistrates and judges over them. And I want you, if, if they don't know the law of God, I want you to teach them the law of God. And you know, everybody's been fighting for a generation about that temple in Jerusalem. I'll tell you what, I want you to beautify it. I want you to renovate it and beautify it. The flashpoint that everybody's been fighting about, I want you to go in there and make it beautiful. Now, forgive me, you're asking a man to take a suicide mission. You're asking a man to do what no human being in their right brain, you'd have to be a lunatic to want to go and do it. But he said, I took courage because the hand of God was upon me. Everybody said, I took courage. Now, now, some of you, God has opened opportunities for you in the middle of COVID-19 to do things that people would look at you and go, you've got to be a lunatic to do that right now. People would look at you and say, are you crazy? Why would you take on such a challenge right now? because the hand of God is upon you. Everybody say, God's hand is upon me. Say it again. God's hand brings us safety and security. And jo let me give you two verses and I get back to Ezra. Joshua 4, verse 24. So that all the peoples of the earth may know that the hand of the Lord is mighty. Then add 2 Chronicles 20, verse 6. In your hand are power and might, so that none is able to withstand you. Now, with those two verses in mind, Ezra 8, verse 22. I was ashamed to ask the king, King Artaxerxes, for a band of soldiers and horsemen to protect us from the enemy on our way. Since we had told the king, the hand of our God is for good on all who seek him, and the power of his wrath is against all who forsake him. Verse 31, when we departed from the river Hava on the 12th day of the first month to go to Jerusalem, the hand of our God was on us, and he delivered us from the hand of the enemy and from ambushes by the way. Now please understand, Ezra is the most hated man in that whole part of the world. He's coming to take charge. Everybody's going to want to kill him. Everybody say, kill him. But he said, King Artaxerxes, I don't need infantry. I don't need protection. The hand of God is upon me. I'll be all right. And you know what? It worked. Now listen to me for the truth. This is the truth I want you to see. No ambushes, no attacks, because God's hand was upon him. Beloved, Maybe only when we get to heaven. Maybe when we get to heaven, God will let us begin to look across history like a video of our lives and see all the things that did not happen to us. Everybody say, did not happen. All the schemes of the devil that God just put a big angel in front of and they were standing there going, you shall not pass. All of the people that intended to harm us, destroy our families, destroy businesses, destroy careers, and God just stopped it in its tracks, and it never happened. The unseen hand of God upon your life has provided so much protection. This is why when people talk to me and they go, how do you know that God's alive, Pastor? I said, because you're still alive. And they say, excuse me? I said, yeah. Satan only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. If Satan would have had his way, every human being on earth would have been dead millenniums ago. 
I said, God is the restraining influence in this world. We'll get more into that next week, Lord willing. But you have to understand, God's hand upon your life has spared you from a gazillion things that have never happened. Let me give you one more. God's hand upon your life may, everybody say may, may initiate supernatural encounters, theophanies, encounters with the reality of God. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 22. And the hand of the Lord was upon me there, and he said to me, Arise and go into the valley, and there I will speak with you. So I arose and went out into the valley, and behold, the glory of the Lord stood there like the glory I had seen by the Kyber Canal, and I fell on my face. And, but the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet and spoke with me and said to me, same principle, Daniel chapter 10, beginning with verse 10. And behold, a hand touched me and set me trembling on my hands and knees. And he said to me, now don't take this and go weird with it. I'm not one of these people who believes that you have encounters with the reality of God on a moment by moment, day by day, week by week, month by month basis. I, I, have, I have never figured out these people who walk around having these imaginary conversations with God all the time and God speaks to them in an audible voice every morning. I don't see that in scripture. But I do see that from time to time in our life, everybody say from time to time. Not every day, not every week, not every moment, not every year even, maybe not even every decade. Maybe just a couple of times in our life, the hand of God will come upon you and God will begin to speak to you. These are, I call them initiative, initiated encounters. God puts his hand upon you and initiates an encounter and he speaks to you. And usually when God begins to speak to you like that, it, it whoa, it goes totally crosswise with everything you're thinking and you're doing because God is realigning your life. But, but don't take this and get spooky and weird with it, but one of the things that you see as a fruit of the hand of God upon our lives is these encounters with God in our lives from time to time. Are you learning? Now take it a step farther. Understanding the hand of God's blessing upon our lives and our service of Him. First of all, the hand of God is what causes a great harvest of souls. Acts 11, beginning with verse 19. In the middle of hard times, the persecution that Paul had started, the persecution of Stephen that had driven every Christian out of Jerusalem with the exception of the apostles. said, so now those who were scattered because of the persecution that arose over Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia and Cyprus and Antioch of Assyria, speaking the word to no one except Jews. But there were some, men of Cyprus and Cyrene, who on coming to Antioch spoke to the Hellenists also, the Gentiles, people like me and you, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them. And a great number who believed turned to the Lord. Now look at that. The hand of God upon a group of men going into a city that did not know the name of Jesus. The hand of God upon them because they were willing to move out of the borders of just preaching to Jews because they were willing to really take the gospel to the world like Jesus intended. The hand of God came upon them. And the next thing you know, the church of Antioch is born. Historians tell us that it was the greatest church of that generation. Over 100,000 people fit into a domed building. Now, they didn't sit down like we sit today. They were standing. It was the first mega church in the world. 100,000 people standing under this big dome. It was the greatest church in the world at that time. But it was given because of a great harvest caused by the hand of God upon a group of people. Now, forgive me, I sit here and I look at this persecution of COVID-19, and really, I, I consider it a pure persecution, a persecution of the devil. All over the world, the devil is shutting down churches. And instead of scattering, what have you started doing? You started opening churches. Over 50,000 people born again this year so far. How does that happen? The hand of God 
is upon our lives. So the, the reason for a great harvest of souls is not techniques and it's not, forgive me, I, I don't want to be rude, but it's not we've learned new technology and so we have this wonderful harvest of souls because we've been forced to learn new technology and yada, yada, yada. No, no. Technology is just a, a methodology. The cause of it is the hand of God upon your life. Everybody say God's hand. I mean, who in the world would have dreamed before COVID-19 that you could get online and have a church in Sydney, Australia, Osaka, Japan, Calgary, Canada, another, Los Angeles, New Jersey. There's another one starting in Winnipeg. I mean, you look at this, and you, then you look at Romblo, and you look at Zamboanga. You, there's another church getting ready to open in Quezon province now. You, you keep looking at all of this, and you go, it's too wonderful for me to understand. It's because of the hand of God. Because of what? In the middle of the hard times, rather than rolling over and playing dead, you've gone out. Like these men who went into Antioch. And rather than just Okay, we're not going to do things like everybody else did them. We're not going to just preach to the Jews. There's a lot of Gentiles here that need Jesus also. And he said, preach the gospel to all creatures. All right, so we're going to go and we're going to try this. And the next thing you know, the greatest church in the world in that generation was born. Simply because of the hand of God. Are you getting this? Now, take it a step farther. Go back with me to Ezra chapter 7. This Ezra went up from Babylonia. He was a scribe skilled in the law of Moses that the Lord, the God of Israel, had given. And the king granted to him all that he asked. Why did the king grant his request? For the hand of his, the Lord his God was with him. Nehemiah, when it came time for him to leave. Nehemiah 2 verse 8. And the king granted me what I asked, for the good hand of my God was upon me. You know, there are people that believe that you have to live in rebellion to go do the will of God. Now, now, brothers and sisters, straight up talk for a minute. Everybody is under authority. Everybody say, everybody is under authority. Nobody gets to just go, go do what they want to do. Everybody has a boss. Everybody has people that they're responsible for. You say, well, I'm my own boss. I own my own business. Uh, you have customers that you're accountable for. I, I didn't hear you. You made a contract, you had to fulfill the contract, you're accountable. Everybody is under some type of authority. Now, I know in the world today, people don't want to be controlled. Well, excuse me, all of us are controlled by those us, over us in authority. Are we still here? Now, look at this. Why, was they, why were Ezra able to do this and why was Nehemiah able to do this? Because the king granted their request. Why did they have favor with people over them in authority? Because God's hand was upon them. Are we still here? Now, you, you have to get a hold of that. You know, maybe God puts it in your heart to go take a two-week holiday and go start a church in your province. But you've got to have your boss's permission to get that two-week holiday. Now, if the hand of God is upon you, you've got the permission. Are we still here? Now, please, I don't want to oversimplify it, but that's really what this is all about. You want to go do something for God. God has put something in your heart to do. The hand of God is what brings favor upon your life from those in authority. Are we still here? Now, take it another step. God's hand upon us brings capable people to help us. Ezra chapter 8, verse 18. And by the good hand of God upon us, they brought us a man of discretion, of the sons of Mahili, the son of Levi, the son of Israel, namely Sarabiah with his son and kinsmen. Ezra chapter 8, I'm sorry, Ezra 7, beginning with verse 27. 
Blessed be the Lord, the God of our fathers, who put such a thing into the heart of the king to beautify the house of the Lord that is in Jerusalem, who extended to me his steadfast love before the king and his counselors and before all the king's mighty officers. I took courage, for the hand of my Lord was upon me, and I gathered leading men from Israel to go up with me. Now both Ezra and Nehemiah knew, I need people to help. Everybody say, I need people to help. You, you can't, if God puts something in your heart to do, you can't do it by yourself. The hand of God brings people of discretion, brings leading capable people to help you. That, that's the hand of God upon your life. Everybody say, people to help. God calls you to start a business. God will bring good employees, people of discretion to help you. Not thieves to steal from you. The hand of God will be upon you. It attracts people to help you. Take it a step farther. The hand of God will bring unity to the people that need to follow you. Second Chronicles chapter 30, verse 12. The hand of God was also on Judah to give them one heart to do what the king and the princes commanded by the word of the Lord. Now let me read you one more verse. Nehemiah 2 verse 17, or verse 18. And I told them of the hand of my God that had been upon me for good and also of the words that the king had spoken to me. And they said, let us rise and build. And so they strengthened their hands for the good work. Now anybody that has ever been a leader understands you can't lead people if they don't choose to follow. You cannot make people do things. Everybody say, you can't make people do things. Any of you that have been a connect group leader, you know that you can't make people do things. You've been a team leader in a call center, you can't make people do things. Moses couldn't make the people of Israel go into the promised land. Nehemiah couldn't make the people start rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. Ezra could not make people come with him and beautify the temple and help him take control of the governmental policies of that area of the world. You can't make people help you. People have to choose. Everybody say, a choice. Say it again. Now, notice how they did this. It said, the hand of God was upon me, upon Judah. To give these people, to give Judah one heart, to do what the king and the princes commanded them by the word of the Lord. They were leading people in God's will. People recognized the hand of God upon the king and upon the princes. And because of that, the people chose to follow. Everybody said, chose to follow. The people of Jerusalem chose to follow Nehemiah and go through all the sacrifice I mean, please, for generations they sat there without walls around the city. For generations they lived in despair and poverty. And now one guy walks into town and all of a sudden they're rebuilding the walls? What happened? The hand of God was upon Nehemiah. And the people recognized something is different now. But the people still had to choose to follow. They chose to follow a man that the hand of God was a palm. Everybody say, God's hand. Say it again, please. Now, now, this is one of the greatest secrets of leadership that I could ever teach you. You can't force people to do things. When we began these buildings, you couldn't force people to do things. When we're doing the Remain Project, you can't force people to do things. When we built South Campus, you can't force people to do things. When we start branch churches, you can't force people to do things. When we went out and did provincial crusades, nobody forced. I remember a pastor walking up to me at one of the early crusades, and they said, you know, do you pay all of the ushers and the, 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 the people to come down to help? And I said, no. In fact, I'm a little concerned that we have so many that we'll take seats away from people. Let me go ask some people to stay outside. You remember that, Marna? These pastors could not believe why ushers and why, why medical workers and why people would just come down and help and pass out flyers in the city all day and help with the crusade at night. And nobody paid them. Nobody paid for their hotel. Nobody paid their transportation. All these people just showed up. Why? The hand of God brought a unity to work together. 
Are you getting this? This is one of the greatest secrets of leadership I can ever teach you. When the hand of God is upon you, people will follow. When the hand of God is not upon you, people will not follow. And even sometimes when the hand of God is on you, they act like they treat you like they treated Moses. But you, you have to learn. People will recognize. Maybe we've been sitting here for generations and we've just learned to live in this, in this horrible situation. But the hand of God is with this guy. Let's follow. We can have a better life. Are we still here? First Chronicles 29, verse 16. O oh Lord our God, David says, this is at the end of David's life. He's just taken up this huge generational offering to build the temple. O oh Lord our God, all the abundance that we have provided for building you a house for your holy name come from your hand and it is all your own. Do you remember I taught you a few weeks ago about blessing? I taught you that the work of God does not have abundance because of the sacrifice of people. The work of God has abundance because God has blessed his people. Are we still here? And are we still here? And I showed you in the scriptures how God's blessing came upon the people there in Nehemiah's day and all that blessing flowed and there was abundance and they were heaping the offerings and then they brought, heap means a pile, they were piling the offerings and then they were taking the piles and making bigger piles. And he said, where did all this come from? And they said, God has blessed the people. Now, beloved, please don't, don't get mad at me, but hear me on this. When we begin to act like our sacrifice did something, all we're doing is making ourselves big. Everybody say, make myself big. You didn't, I mean, please forgive me. When we look at this building, when we look at South Campus, we didn't sacrifice anything. Everything we gave, God first gave us. Are we still here? And when, when you learn to quit thinking about, it's all about me, you, you get your attitudes right. You begin to realize Everything that we have done, all of the abundance that God has given us as a church is because God has blessed. Everything has flowed from his hand upon us. So we don't sacrifice. God blesses. Everybody say, he gives me the seed to sow. And David, a man that God's hand was upon, understood this truth. So rather than running around talking about, look at all I've sacrificed, look at all I've given up, oh, ho, ho. Instead of doing that, he said, everything we have given to this came from your hand upon our lives. You blessed us. Now, oh, hey, I've gone too long, very quickly. When you look at this, you go, Pastor, I want God's hand upon my life. How many of you would say that, Pastor, I want God's hand upon my life? I don't think that's a bad prayer request. Jabez prayed it and God granted his request. Everybody say, God granted. So if, if Jabez can pray it and God will grant it, I believe that we can pray it and God will grant it. But now there are some other things. Look at Ezra. Ezra 7 verses 9 to 10. For on the first day of the first month, he began to go up from Babylonia. And on the first day of the fifth month, he came to Jerusalem. For the good hand of God was on him. Now, why was the good hand of God upon him? Look at the very next verse. For or because Ezra had set his heart to study the law of the Lord and to do it and to teach his statutes and rules in Israel. Now, there were a lot of people who were scribes. Ezra was a scribe and a priest. There were a lot of people who were scribes, but God's hand was not on them. There were a lot of people who were priests, but God's hand was not upon them. Why was God's hand upon Ezra? For he set his heart, another translation says, he devoted himself. Everybody said devoted. He set his heart, he devoted himself to study the word, to live the word, and to teach the word. Everybody say, study the Word, live the Word, and teach the Word. 
Now, you know, there's going to be a lot of Christians running around the world. But if you want to be a Christian that God's hand is upon, something unique, study the Word. Live the Word. Teach the Word. I didn't hear you. Young pastors come to me and they say, Pastor Sumrall, how can I be successful in the ministry? Be like Ezra. Be like Ezra. Be devoted to a study of the Word. I remember many years ago, some pastors on our staff were making fun of me because I always had a Bible with me. They thought that was really funny. I always had a Bible with me. Wherever they'd find me, I'd be reading a Bible. They thought it was something to make fun of me about. You know what? I'm still standing. They're not. Are we still here? Study the Word. Live the Word. Don't just know about the Bible. Live the Bible. And teach the Bible. Don't teach your little stories. Don't teach little sermonettes off Great God Google. In your connect groups, don't just kumasta and tell sweet stories to people. Don't pass on little Facebook slogans. Teach the Word. I didn't hear you. Now, one last thing, and then I'll close it out. Ezra, chapter 8, verse 22. The hand of our God is for good on all who seek him. On all who what? New International Version says, the gracious hand of our God is on everyone who looks to him. Like Jabez, pray. Now, I have not taught you some weird theology tonight. I've taught you the theology behind a song you sang in children's church. Read your Bible. I haven't taught you something weird. It's not so hard to accomplish. You devote yourself to the study, the living, and the teaching of the Word. You have a heart to seek God. Like a deer pants for the water, so my soul seeks after thee. You have a heart that seeks God. You have a devotion to the word, to study, to live, and to teach it. And the hand of God is upon your life. Everybody say, it's that simple. Say it again. It's that simple. Now, young people, listen to me. Young people at home, listen to me. If COP is going to have a future, it's going to be because a new generation rises up that understands this truth that this generation has had to live. Everything we've done, we've done in the hard times. And God's hand has been upon us. If Jesus tarries, and I wouldn't be surprised if the rapture happened tonight, but if Jesus tarries, if the next generation is going to do great things, forgive me, we don't need your great brains. We don't need your charisma. We don't need your influence things from Facebook. Forgive me, that, that's not the way to solid achievement in business, in your careers, and definitely not in the work of God. Do you want to be successful in life? How many of you want to be successful? You need God's hand upon you. And people will look at you and they'll say, I can't figure out how they do what they do. I can't figure out how they, how they achieve what they achieve. And you just look at them and go, don't look at them and go, look at them and go, are we still here? How did you build that business? Don't look at them and go, look at them and go, God. God's hand has been upon your life. Now, at some point, young people, you've got to put away your Korean telenovelas. You've got to put away your, what is it, KBC, KB, the Korean singing group. Who? K-pop, but the new group that did the McDonald's thing. Who? Whatever. You've you got to put it all away. 
And you've got to start putting your heart in the Word. And you've got to start putting your heart in God. Now, you, you can go do that other stuff. You won't go to hell for it. You just won't have much achievement in life. I, I didn't hear you. You need God's hand upon your life. You need to put away the video games. Forgive me. I'm, I'm talking straight to you. You've gotten so consumed. You've got bored, and then you cre the boredom created a lifestyle. I want to challenge you to interrupt that lifestyle, to interrupt that lifestyle that is controlling you, and put your heart to seeking God in Jesus' name. And put your heart to being devoted to study the Word, live the Word, and teach the Word in Jesus' name. Did you learn something? Would you stand with me, please? Take out your communion emblems. I told you earlier, one of the great confusions in the world, <laughs> Jews look at Christians who talk about sacrifice, and Jews look at Christians who talk about, you know, God won't provide, and Jews look at you and go, I thought we worshiped the same God. All of their lives, the Jews have known, even the Jews that don't follow God. They know that God is the one who brings blessing. God is good. The devil is bad. And God will put his hand upon your life, a hand of blessing upon your life. Everybody's a hand of blessing. A hand of blessing that causes things to happen that people just don't understand. But you have to learn to focus your heart and seek Him and focus your heart on the Word. I, I didn't hear you. Ulikanat and this bread represents His body. Represents His body. Hung on a cross for me. Hung on a cross. Yes, He took the punishment of my sins. Yes, He took the punishment of my sins. Yes, He brought redemption. Yes. But yes also. yes, also, he bore the curse of the law. He, the the law. he broke the power, broke the power of sickness, sickness and poverty, poverty and disease, and disease. Off, of my life. off of my life. What he did on the cross, he did on the cross. Brings, the brings the blessings of Abraham and the covenants of promise, covenants of promise. into my life. Jesus did not just provide my salvation. He changed the quality of my life by his sufferings. I remember what he did for me. Let us partake of the bread together. Ulitanat in this cup represents his blood. All of my life, I have been made to feel guilty about God's goodness. But his blood made me worthy for all of his goodness to flow to my life. Before God, by the blood of my Savior, I am justified, I'm clean, I'm pure, and I'm holy. Not by what I have done, by what He has done for me. Let us partake of the cup together.
Father, I lift to you your people tonight. I pray especially for all the young people, Lord. Lord, give them a heart for you. Father, you're not just stories. You're real. Give them a heart to know you. Give them a heart to cry out for you. Give them a heart, Lord, to reach out for you more than anything else in life. Give them a hunger for the word, Lord. A desire to get up every morning of their lives and dig into the word. To learn your truths. To learn your ways. Father, I ask for a whole new wave of young people coming up within the church that want your presence more than anything else in life. And Lord, then let people see the difference. Let them see your hand upon their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Everybody say, Father, bless me. Father, enlarge my territory. Father, may your good hand of blessing be upon my life. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. You may be seated. No, I didn't forget, guys. They, they get the baskets out so I, they think pastor's going to forget again. When you're ready, come. In the, in the balconies, we've got the baskets out. In the parking lots, our ushers will help you. Here on the ground floor, southeast, north, main, Bulacan, Papanga, Cavite, come. Bring your tithe and seed before the Lord. Would you stand with me, please? Let me ask you a question tonight. How many of you in this COVID thing, how many of you have God, has God blessed you in a financial way? Would you raise your hand up high? How do you figure that? God is with you. God's hand is upon you. These are supposed to be very hard times, but God has been good to you. Now, beloved, don't ever take it for granted. Seek him. Dig into the word in Jesus' name. Father, we bring to you tonight your tithe. We bring you tonight the offerings, the seed that you graciously gave us to sow. And Father, we don't ever have a bad attitude. We don't ever think about this as sacrifice. We think about it as privilege because everything first came from your hand and you trusted us. Lord, let your blessing rest upon all the work of your people's hands. Let your hand be upon their businesses. Let your hand be upon their careers for promotion and not for termination. Let your hand be upon the young people in their studies. Father, let them go to the head of the class. Let them see dean's listers. Let them see valedictorians. Let them see miracles happen even in the educational areas. Let your hand be upon your people. 
Let your gracious hand be upon us, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Campus pastors, would you come, please? Amen. Let us all pray. Father, we thank you so much, O God, for your wonderful word, O God, that was taught tonight. And we ask, O God, for every young people, O God, every family, every lolos and lolas, O God, all of us, Lord, we thank you so much that you will give us a heart, O God, that is seeking you, Lord, day by day, Lord, to seek your presence, O God, to be lovers of your word, O God, to live according to your word, O God, and even to teach the word of God. And Father, we thank you that as we do so, your hand, O oh God, will be upon us, and this will bring success in our lives, O oh God. That, during, that even during these hard times, O oh God, we will see success taking place, O oh God, because your hand will be upon your people. And God, even as we depart from this place, we commit to you, God, every person, O oh God, in this place. Thank you, God, that you're going to bless them, O oh God, with protection, and Lord, give them a quick ride home. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you, everyone, and see you again next weekend.